with financial fair play frequently in the headlines? How many clubs identify FFP and Premier League Profit and Sustainability Rules compliance as a KPI? Astonishingly, just teams have identified these as a core metric of the club. I'm not going to laugh at you, I'm speechless. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Usually, we're jumping on a football club's money trail to understand the financial story off the pitch, but this time, we're shifting gears. No numbers. This is frightening. Oh my gosh. Today, we're delving into how football clubs measure success and the secret source behind their performance metrics, also known as Key Performance Indicators, or KPIs. Under the Companies Act, companies, including Premier League and Championship clubs, are required to deliver a business review along with their financial statements. Its aim? To help inform and assess how the directors have performed their duties by setting out a fair review of the club's business and principal risks, as well as an analysis of the development, performance and position of the company. Now to do that, we've obviously had to try and lay down some criteria. Directors are encouraged to spotlight key performance indicators, both financial and non-financial, to gain insights into the club's performances. Do you want the stats? Yeah, but, then... but what exactly is a KPI? A KPI is a measurable value that demonstrates how a company, or in this case club, is achieving its key objectives. So what are the top goals for Premier League and Championship teams and how do they keep score with KPIs? After combing through the financial statements from all 44 teams, we've sorted their KPIs into three categories. Non-financial, financial, wild cards. Before we dive in, it's worth noting that not every club spills the beans on their KPIs and their financial statements. For clubs like Brighton and Leeds, they do provide some insight on the state of their club, but don't formally declare KPIs unlike the rest. Here's Chelsea's as an example. For other clubs such as Sheffield Wednesday, the directors do track KPIs, but deem it unnecessary to share them with us in their accounts. That said, we're sticking to the KPIs that clubs officially designate to keep things objective. So what do football club directors care about? Let's dive into our first category. League position emerges as a core non-financial KPI. No shocker that over half the clubs are eyeing it as a top priority. While most KPIs focus on the men's team, Liverpool stands out by tracking the performance of all squads, including the women's teams. Next up, six teams are keeping a close eye on their performance in domestic cups while an equal number are gunning for glory in Europe. Match attendance takes centre stage as the final non-financial KPI, with half clubs keeping tabs on the numbers. Norwich serves up both flavours, tracking average attendance as well as season ticket sales. Well, no controversy so far, but what's cooking on the financial front? Listen, fair play. We'll be back to our programming shortly, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'll be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll keep up to date with all the latest videos. Thanks for all your support, and now back to your scheduled programming. Revenue metrics are all the rage, with 28 out of 44 clubs tracking top-line KPIs, usually total revenue or revenue growth. Next in line, we've got profit. Another popular one with 59% of clubs focusing on some form of profitability metric. This is where there is more variety in what teams track. Take Bristol City for example, they're tracking EBITDA and losses minus player trades. Meanwhile, Newcastle have their sights set on operating profit pre-player purchases, overall operating profit and their financial loss post-tax for the year. Keep in mind, these profits aren't the ones that play into financial fair play or profit and sustainability assessments. We'll get onto that in a sec. Unsurprisingly, staff costs are another common KPI. Fulham showing the two most common metrics, total staff costs as well as percentage of revenue. Player trading KPIs are a rarer breed. Only 11 teams are keeping score in the buying and selling of players. Also less common are metrics around the club's balance sheet or cash flows. Just 12 teams here. Examples include the amount of cash on hand and net assets at Plymouth Argyle, whereas Hull City focus on net debt. And finally, with financial fair play frequently in the headlines, how many clubs identify FFP and Premier League Profit and Sustainability Rules compliance as a KPI? Astonishingly, just two teams have identified these as a core metric of the club. I'm not going to laugh at you, I'm speechless. Arsenal and Chelsea. However, despite calling this out as a KPI, they do not disclose the profit figures used for assessment. In fact, across these 44 teams, 
Only one publicly shares its financial fair play submission, Ipswich Town. Given over half the teams have identified league position and revenue as core KPIs and the known risks of breaching the rules around financial fair play, perhaps it's time for some teams to revisit their metrics. But enough of these financials, which clubs are thinking out the box? First up we have Luton, focusing on player development by tracking how many academy players are registered in the first team squad, increasing by 10 in the year. Southampton takes it up a notch with four player development KPIs. Number of players with international recognition at senior or under 21 level, men's and women's. Number of players with international honours at youth level. Number of players on scholarship agreements. And number of academy players in the first team. Here's another unique one. The Saints are keeping tabs on the average length of the first team's remaining contracts to gauge squad stability. But when it comes to wild cards, Brentford may take the cake. They're not just looking at league position, they're also tracking their XG league position as a key performance indicator. You can sit there and look and play with all your silly machines as much as you like. So there you have it, a thorough exploration of the metrics and KPIs driving the top teams in the country. But here's the big question, what do you think they should prioritise for success? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Otherwise, see you next time.